This video demonstrates how to create a horizontal bar chart and sort the data on the bar chart for per square foot repair costs. Now that we have created our calculated fields, it's time to visualize the data. We can do so using a horizontal bar chart. We first need to select the measure we would like to visualize. In this case, it will be repair cost per square foot. Go ahead and identify repair cost per square foot and drag that into the columns field at the top. Note the default for Tableau is to visualize the sum of this measure. We can change this to be the average repair cost by simply clicking on the down arrow inside the PILM, looking at the measure, and then selecting average instead of sum. While the average repair cost per square foot may be informative, we would like to see the relative size of the repair costs per square foot for each claim. To do this, we're going to need to find the claim number on the dimensions menu and drag the claim number pill to the rows. Now we can see our horizontal bar chart by claim number showing us the relative size of the average repair cost per claim. We could click on the show me option to see other visualizations that might be useful given the measures and dimension information that we have selected to display. For example, we could select the packed bubbles option, which shows the repair cost per square foot for each claim with the larger size bubbles designating larger repair costs per square foot. Go ahead and click the undo button at the top to go back to your horizontal bar chart. We still have the show me highlighted, so if we want to minimize this, we would simply go ahead and click minimize there. To make it quick and easy to identify the relative size of the repair cost per square foot, go towards the top of your sheet and you will see a sorting box appear. Clicking on this box once sorts by descending, clicking on the box again will sort by ascending, and clicking on the box a third time will sort back originally to the original sort. Go ahead and hit the box one more time to sort the claims by descending. Now we can quickly identify those claims which appear to have a relatively larger repair cost per square foot than the other claims in the data set. While it's natural to want to focus on these those claims that have larger repair costs per square foot, it may also be the case that claims with abnormally low repair costs per square foot are worthy of investigation. This could be because individuals suspect that any level of review would focus on the larger claims, and thus they would be more likely to receive a payout if they submit a smaller claim. Alternatively, it could indicate that the repair costs have either been mistakenly entered or it could result in workmanship that does not meet the standards typically desired for repairs by the insurance company. The latter issue could result in larger claims in the future as the roof fails or bad faith claims against that insurance company by the policyholder. We can use the scroll bar to see the claims with lower repair cost estimates. To ensure that our visualization is as neat as possible, we should add a chart title, filter out observations that do not have repair costs because replacement costs were recommended instead, and then add labels. We can change the chart title from sheet 3 in one of two ways. We could click up here and try to rename it using the drop down menu to edit the title. Or we can simply go back to renaming our sheet where we right click select rename and then we can type on this repair costs per square foot. We can filter out observations that are missing a repair cost per square foot by selecting the repair cost per square foot pill from the measures men menu. We can then go ahead and click on average since that's how we had defined our horizontal bar chart in the beginning and then click next and now we're going to do the at least option because we'd like it to be greater than zero. So once we go ahead and move that up just a little bit we can click apply and then hit OK and we will no longer see those one those claims with zero repair costs appearing at the bottom of our chart. 
Finally, we may want to have the labels put onto our horizontal bar chart so that it's really easy to identify not just visually how much larger are they, but what was the repair cost at per square foot that had been estimated. So we can go ahead and go back to our estimated cost to repair and we can go ahead and drag that over to label. And if we don't want it to be the sum, then we can go ahead and click average. Well, I've demonstrated how to do a variety of things with this horizontal bar chart. I'm going to remind you again that it's your job to determine what it constitutes abnormally large, how do we want to visualize this, what is going to be the best way to communicate the information to help somebody identify not only which claims should potentially be investigated further, but why you're making those recommendations. I'll give you one more hint here. And you might want to try to see if there's a relation between the repair costs per square foot and the repair costs by story. Well, we can easily do this by adding a second measure to this horizontal bar chart. So here we can take our repair cost per story and we can drag that up into our columns and we can change that measure down to be the average just as we have for our other measure. And now we can start to see whether this has a relation to the repair costs that have been recommended per square foot and by story. The problem here is that these story numbers are actually representing the average estimated cost to repair. They are not going to tell us what is the number of stories that a house has. So if we want to change this, now we see that we have a number of options under our marks menu. So we can go ahead and remove this label that we have here from this side. And instead of that, we can drag over the number of stories that a house has into our label option. And so now we can see the estimated cost to repair as well as the estimated cost um, by the per, per story amount, but also how many stories the home has so that it gives us just a little bit more information in one visualization about what might be driving the costs that have been estimated for this particular claim.